Eh, we're always latish. Whatever, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, you may notice we're in a different part of our office. The, the Indie Week offices, obviously. That's yes. right. That's right. We actually, I'm Daryl. I'm Cam. At the Indie Week office downtown Toronto. And uh, we do this every Thursday, somewhere between 2 and 3. Yeah, sometimes around that. Yeah. As we wait for the floods to happen all over the city. Yeah. Well, it'll be, you know, raining for a while. But half my beach is gone. What? It's unbelievable. Like, the water's all the way up to the boardwalk. And no. We've done a lot of erosion this year. The, the levels are so high, so. That's crazy. It is crazy. So, uh, so we do this video every week, and we talk about stuff going on around Toronto and the music scene and just music scene in general. Yeah. You know. And we have a beverage as well. Yes. My beverage today is an Equilibrium. ESB extra special bitter from Nickelbrook Nickelbrook Breweries in Burlington. <laughs> Jesus, that's a mouthful. It's quite good. It's, it's rather bitter, but quite nice. And cider boy here. Well, actually, so today uh, it's called squirting oranges, <laughs> uh, but it's it's uh, actually a vodka beverage. Oh, okay. So a pool step drink. Up, a step up. I don't mind. I don't actually don't mind the girl drinks by the pool in the summer, <laughs> with the palm and stuff like that. One or two. Couldn't yeah. drink them all day, but seven percent alcohol. Well, there you go. You know, and it's before five on the Thursday. Should be a good day. As opposed to the seventy seven percent gin that's going around right now that was pulled mm. off the uh, liquor store shelves. That's right. Seventy seven percent. My goodness. I don't <laughs> like gin though. Anyways. Anyways, yeah. we digress. <laughs> So, what are we going to talk about? Well, we can talk about last week. I want to say thanks to uh, the staff at Cherry Colas. They invited everyone. They just survived their first CMW with yep. the new owners. Cherish is still involved, but uh, our friends Alex and Matt and bartender Sean, they're very involved, so they wanted to have a little party for everyone who was involved in one way or another with CMW, so they invited us all over last week and had some burgers in the rain once again, and yep. a little thank you, and it was very nice of them. It was, it was great. And... Uh, you know, it's it's the kind of thing that I'm starting to see uh, in Toronto. Like we've had this whole venue thing; that's an ongoing thing. But uh, a lot of people are coming together more mm -hmm. and actually supporting each other, and so there is a positive through it all. Oh yeah, for sure. And you know, speaking of positives, you know, oh, I guess we should talk about last week before we get into our venue chat. So, sure. and you, you saw a great band last week, F. Scott and the Nighthawks. Um, yeah. Well, Monday. Monday. Yeah, F. Scott and the Nighthawks at uh, the Drake on Monday. A uh, good friend, Derek Downham, was uh, playing in the band as well, so it was good to see him. Used to manage Derek when he was in a band called Trophy. Nice. Todd. Yeah. I booked that band a couple times. He was a drummer. Yeah. Even though he's known as a guitar player and works a lot with Andy Kim as well. And he plays every instrument Yeah, now. he's one of those he's guys. Awesome. And aren't they doing a song with Jesse from uh, Eagles of Death Metal? Yes. Uh, I was actually out with their manager last night, and uh, they did a session yesterday. So... Yep, very yeah, cool. He got the text messages while we were in meetings. Nice, That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I you know what the band was great. Um, there's, I think uh, the band's going to have lots of potential, and it'll be interesting to see what they. It's do. a big band too, isn't it? I lost count. I think there's six or eight. Like Almond Brothers. <laughs> yeah, four guitars. There's four guitars, I think. Nice. There's uh, percussion and drums. You know. So we so. got Santana meets the Almond Brothers. Yeah, it was awesome though. Yeah. It was good, and uh, so uh, looking forward to see how they develop over the next year or so. You know, again, Derek Downham's in the bands, and right. he's going to be producing them as well. So, you know, it'll be good. Yeah, he's got a great ear. Yeah. So what's up? What's next? What's up? What's next? Well, we we started to talk about venues a little bit. We're losing yeah. a great one in Ottawa, unfortunately, on May fourteenth. Uh, Zephod Beeble Brocks. No. Oh, it is squirting oranges. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, it's closing one of the you know one of the great venues in Canada. Uh, if you're from Halifax, it's like what the Seahorse used to be downstairs. Even though the Seahorse is still alive, but, or the Horseshoe in Toronto. And yep. And hold it back there, Dylan, web guy, designer guy, and does a lot of our photos on our website as well. That's right, like photographer. Yes. So we're losing Zayfod. Unfortunately, Eugene sold it about a year ago. It was a great host, and I've had many bands through there through the years and. It's, it's, it's be the Horseshoe of Ottawa, you yeah. know, and um, I, I thought it was the one venue that was kind of like it's in the market, but it's still the downtown core that brought people in because mm -hmm. a lot of the other venues I found are kind of like it spread out in yeah. different areas of the city now. So it'll be interesting how 
it affects the downtown area, you know? Like, the, yeah. Cafe the, de Cuff is still there. Mavericks is still there. Um, you know, Barry Moore's was still sort of slightly off from downtown. Yeah. You know, so... The one thing that Eugene used to do, which was fantastic, and I wish a lot, you know, I know it's time-consuming, and you can do this yourself, but if you were a touring band on his website, he told you every programmer in that city, every campus radio station contact, everything you needed to know as a touring act yeah. was there on the website. So it was, it was incumbent on you, the artist, to get press for your show and get bodies out to your show. And I wish, you know, a few more venues would do that if they had the time, but... Yeah. It's something you can do yourself, but it was so easy as a publicist. Right. Just like, oh, there's been a change here. And, like, it was always updated. There's a new PD at CKCU or whatever, you know, the campus radio station was or whatever the weekly was. And it was right. fantastic what they used to do there, so. Yeah, it's, well, I guess every city's changing a little bit. Yeah. You know, there's closures and openings. There's an opening in Toronto. So. The, Masonic, the Masonic Temple's coming back, 888 Young Street. Yes. Which was where Zeppelin played. 1969, oh, wow. way back when, where I saw the Ramones and Iggy Pop and Smashing Pumpkins and Nine Inch Nails. So, so you've seen a lot of shows there. I have. You've got to have a story. Um, yeah, I probably have a few, but I remember the one, because it, it's a three-part story, is my, my wife at the time had lined up all day because the Ramones were playing with Iggy on the Last for Life tour. Right. So they, her and Lynn lined up all day long, started at noon, ended up getting front row. Which is fantastic. It's, it's an intimate venue. It's very old school and stage's nice and high. Mm -hmm. And then during "I Want to Be Your Dog," Iggy was like had his horse tail on, and because he always did that, and threw a chair out, and it sort of ricocheted off her. Oh, okay. Flash forward about I don't know twenty years later, and Iggy's playing with some Forty One at Cool House for I think it was the Casby Awards or whatever. They did the Skull Ring record together. Okay. He stage dives and lands on my daughter. <laughs> About a year after that, I'm interviewing Iggy, and I said, listen, you threw a chair at my wife, you landed on my daughter, what are you going to do to me next time you come to town? And he just thought that was hilarious. So, that's awesome. Yeah. That's my cool. Iggy story. <laughs> and how was the interview with Iggy? It was great. We talked for about an hour and a half when the Stooges put the reunion record out about, really? I guess, three or five, I guess five or six years ago now. But yeah, we just chatted and chatted. And yeah. Very articulate, very smart, knows his business, suffers no fools. So. It's pretty amazing how he's come out on the other side of everything he's done because yeah. there's a lot of interviews online where like there's a famous one where he just sort of uh i think it was with genie Beck becker yeah right? from the new music yeah the, yeah and he he was definitely on some substance and mm -hmm. uh it's amazing that some of the, some of these uh legends come out of that and are like sharp as anything and yeah like he knows what he's doing you know like i i saw him uh, Riot Fest, I think it was about four or five years ago, um, and, and uh, it, it was like what a performance that he put on! It was amazing, yeah. and uh, but like the second he's done, he's just like wiped out, tired, you know. Like he puts everything into it. Mm -hmm. So still taking his shirt off, still going <laughs> for it, man. Yeah. Iggy Pop, like what a guy. We love Iggy, and on that so, tour. Um, the Last of Your Life tour had Hunt and Tony Sales on bass and drums, who were half a Tin Machine as well. So. One of my favorite bands. Yeah, Tin Machine. If you don't, if you don't know Tin Machine, look it up. It was David Bowie's uh, project that he when he wanted to be in a band again. Exactly. He didn't want to be David. Bo he was still David Bowie, but he was one of four guys in a band, and they put out two great records and a live record as well, I believe. Live record. Oy vey. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I was watching some of that just the other week. Yeah. Yeah, um, and then. Uh, can't really say much, but I know there's there's potentially one or two more venues opening in Toronto that I've heard of. So possibly in the next two months, there, there we might have some more venues. So That's good. and there's a new one we, we've talked about a few times: Stop, Drop, and Roll, which our friends of Primitive Evolution are playing tonight at 10:30. Yes. Uh, but there's also a GoFundMe page for Tina Six, who is the owner and operator. Um, it's not to save the club by any means, but she's put her heart and soul and a lot of her personal finances into. Uh, Getting that club up and running again, the old Rancho Relaxo. So, yeah, if you can help out, I'm sure you can just go to GoFundMe and look Tina Six. And yeah, we, we and you know, like we've we've mentioned Stop, Drop, and Roll quite a bit of times, but mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, any new venue in Toronto that's supporting the development of emerging artists definitely go out. And, yeah, and if you can't you know, do GoFundMe, just go out and have a beer at the club. That helps just as much. Yeah, so. support the bands that are playing. So tonight, a primitive evolution. Yes. Our friends Stu, Brett, and Steph. Yes. 
you know. Uh, and and for Indie Week, it's there's actually a, a connection with that band because Brett and Steph were in the band that won the first year. That would be lie. Uh, well, they were oh. aphasia when they oh won, okay, and then the year later they uh, changed to lie. So uh, really good friends with them, uh, really good people, and uh, glad to see that they're still rocking out. Yep. You know, and then Stu does play Dead Calls, of course, which is you know fantastic clothing. Legendary, you know, if you're in the Toronto music scene or even Montreal, because his stuff is up in clubs there too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like you go to the hideout and it's play dead. You go yeah. to stop, drop and roll, play dead. There's some old bowline play dead shirts as well that I have, and yeah, yeah. So tonight, ten thirty, a primitive evolution. Yeah. Uh, this just breaking news as we go to air um, the Prison Prize, which is for Canada's top video. The top ten has been announced. Uh, it will be given away Sunday, May 14th at the uh, Lightbox Theatre. But they just announced their Special Achievement Award for this year, and it's going to Revolver Films. So congratulations to Don oh. Allen for one of the pioneers. Our friend Don Allen. Yeah. What a great guy. You know, like he's... Uh, I know in the past they've done like the Tea Party videos. They, oh, like, they go back to doing Platinum Blonde videos. Yeah. And they were one of the first video companies in Canada. And yeah. Neva Chow worked yeah. for uh, Revolver as well. So uh, Neva, just so you know, is in Dearly Beloved. Yes. Yeah, so. so congratulations, Don. Look forward to yeah. having a beer with you uh, at the Prison Prize when you get your award. Long overdue. And yeah, that's awesome. Fantastic news for, for Don and his company. And yeah. they're still doing it. So. And when is that again? Uh, Sunday, May 14th at Bell Lightbox. So like in a week. Okay. Yeah, and they'll do the top 10 videos. And there's, I've, I've been on the jury panel for a couple of years. We get it down to the top 10. Right. Then we vote on our top three. And it's just about 150 of us from across the country in all different fields wow. of entertainment. And they that's announced awesome. Cal Matson won last year with this great video that we showed at Riff. Yep. So. That's awesome, though. Yeah. Congrats to Don, man. Yeah. He's done so much. And still does. Yeah. Uh, and then, so that's next Sunday. That, uh, week Sunday, yeah. 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 And uh, I'll be just getting back from New York. Yeah, you're going down to Fest Forums. Fest Forums in New York. Uh, so, yeah, this is kind of more going down to, to see what it's all about. But it's, it's, you know, I've been going to conferences that are like bands mm. based, like it's music and whatnot. And this one is uh, people who organize and deal with festivals. And so. And not specifically music festivals. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's just basically organizing events, and there's some pretty high end people that are attending. So mm-hmm. I'm pretty excited about it. And I haven't been to New York in quite a while, so that's pretty cool. Got to go to Man- Manitoba's on B. <laughs> Had some Dick Manitoba from the Dictators. It's a great bar. Nice. Been down there. You know, it's like the new CBs, but it's been there for 20 years. So. Yeah, and there's no CB CBGBs anymore, so no, won't be seeing any. That's no, a John Veritas teacher shop. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, what else is going on? We've got our playlists up. Our new Spotify lists are up for this week. Uh, fantastic any, music from around the world. Any standout tracks that you can think of? Uh, once I put you on the spot, you right? You do, because I've already got next week's ready, so I can't even remember what was on last week's, because <laughs> I did them a week in advance. So. Right. Which is great, you know, all the people who applied for us this year. and Yeah. Any, in our buzz tracks. any hints as to who's on next week, then? Oh, no, don't do this to me. <laughs> All right. Next week, I'll have my cheat sheet in front of me, so... All right. Well, I'll get... Well, actually, some friends of yours are going on next week. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What Return for Refund, you said, right? Yes, Return for Refund. Who's releasing a new video uh, either today or this weekend? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, so they'll be on next week's Buzz Tracks, so amongst others. Shout out to Drew and Return for Refund. Yeah. So, wait for that. Uh, What else? What else? We're just rolling through everything. Yeah, we today. are. We're going very quickly. I have to put my glasses on and check my list again. Uh, that's the wrong list. <laughs> I'm just having one of those days. So, um, yeah, that's the wrong video list. That's last week's. Great. And, the, like, I guess some of the stuff that we wanted to talk about always is, like, you know, what's going on with bands. And we always try to talk about, like, some of the things to help out bands, you know. I posted a, a link, and I'll put it on our Indie Week page. Uh, it's something like 17 points as to, like, why what your you band's not successful. Doing wrong, yeah. yeah. And, and I've had a lot of good comments and a lot of good shares, and and uh, I'll put put it on the Indie Week page, but it's it's interesting to see the comments I get whenever I post these things, 
because uh, a lot of it is based off of emotion, where it's like they read it and go, no, that's wrong or that's bullshit. Where it's like if you actually read it and think about it, it's actually pretty bang on a lot of the times. And and I think sometimes artists are too close to their own project to step back mm -hmm. and look at the big picture, black and white, is this correct or not? And uh, I followed that up by, like, I put a picture up of, like, a whole bunch of artists, and I said, that's right, image doesn't matter, right? And it's, like, Elvis with, like, his big shades, big uh, sideburns, uh, El Elton John with, like, feathers. Right, David Bowie with a lightning bolt across his face. Exactly. Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper. Kiss. Kiss. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, you know, where he's got, like... Yeah, some some animal tail on his shoulder and big scarfs and all this stuff. Like, so I think I think uh, there's a point to be said where you know a lot of bands don't think image, or doesn't think that image like it doesn't matter at mm -hmm. all. Where actually it's one of the biggest selling points a band has, and it's one of the defining parts of their brand and who they are that distinguishes them from all the other thousands of bands out there. You know, like Elvis wore a cape. He wore a gold suit. He wore full-on leather, like, pants yeah. and everything. He wore the big Elvis glasses, which became, like, they're still selling them. Yeah. You know? Um, Graham Parsons wore his, uh, his nudie suits. Yeah. Uh, David Bowie, like you said, had a lightning bolt on his face for a while. Changed his color to, his hair yeah. to red. Shaved off his eyebrows. Mm -hmm. You know, like... There's there's something to be said about being just a, in a band or being a superstar and doing the stuff that no one else is willing to do. And I feel that makes everybody else, like the fans, go, I wish I had the guts to do that. Even an anti-image can be an image. Nirvana. You know, yeah, or, yeah, that, yeah, it was probably thought out what they were wearing, even though it didn't look like it. Or even, yeah. you know, Brian Adams with his black leather jacket and his white shirt. I'm sure he probably showed up to the venue like that, but changed the white shirt to a different white shirt before he went on stage, so he felt like he was getting on stage. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I've been with bands where they call it, like, their uniform. You know, like, we, we've got to put our uniforms on and stuff, but it's what people remember and what they identify with. And if you don't have that, it's harder, to, I think, to get to that upper level of an artist where it's like you, you've got a brand. Yeah. They, people buying tickets because they expect certain things. When I say Angus Young, you think? The schoolboy outfit. There you go. <laughs> yep. Even in that band. And that's a band where you go, no real image. Mm -hmm. But Brian Johnson always had a hat on. Right. right. Every single time. I figured he was just bald. Yeah, but... You never know. But yeah, he but, always had the peak hat, the handicapped cap, that's, as I like to call it. That's yeah. it. And he always had like a jean vest. And if he was wearing a shirt, the sleeves were cut off, like, almost every single time, mm -hmm. you know? Which, to most people, like, that's not a big deal, but it's like, he's the same in yeah, everything. It was thought out. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and uh, uh, you could go on and on, like, Michael Jackson had the one glove. The red leather, you, you know, know, the beat it jacket. Yeah. And, and if I said the purple one, you would think... Prince, Prince, obviously. and the Revolution are playing at the Phoenix later this month. By the way, the original band. Oh no way! Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic be great. night. Yeah, my old friend Brown Mark, who I put a couple solo records out with on Motown. Oh wow! Way back when. Way so back when. Wendy and Lisa and Dr. Funk. So it should be an emotional but very cool night because Prince had some roots in Toronto. He he owned a home here for a couple of years. He married uh, married a local girl. Uh, what's her name again? Is it Maya? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. He had a studio here. Yeah, his house is for sale actually in Brattlewood right now. I was, yep. I was scoping it the other day, but you know, <laughs> I'm going to stay where I am for yeah. the time being. You're always be, uh, be a beacher. Yeah, exactly, even without the beach. So, so anyways, wrapping that segment up is more like, you know, I think artists have to really look at themselves and look at what their image is and... If they are like the artists, like somebody, some artists are like, we don't care, we don't want to go to that next level, like mm -hmm. we like where we're at. But if you're an artist that's going for it and wants to be like international or national, like star, right? you have to step out and do what people aren't willing to do. Yeah, you know? but you don't necessarily have to hire a consultant to dress you either. Yeah. But you just think about it and what you want to present as your act, so. And, 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 and I... 
I would always think is like like the, the artist that I've worked with was like what defines you a, like apart from anyone else mm -hmm. you have to do something that no one else is doing period and that I think is the hard part because it has to also be a reflection of who they are for it to come across as real not yeah. fake but uh, they have to do something that's different you know like John in Age of Electric playing his bass on the floor yep he's the only guy I've ever seen do that my entire career constantly out west uh, he was known for other things <laughs> he used to uh, this grossed everybody out but he would spit on the ceiling and then he would time it I don't know how but like it would kind of drip down and he would literally just yeah, catch Hugh, it in his mouth all the time Hugh Dillon was good for that <laughs> as well actually the Headstones new record's coming out next month uh, yeah. from our friends in Cadence yeah um, and they're also playing the Velvet Underground I think June 2nd oh, just no announced way. Oh, Which cool. would be fun to see them down there. Last time I saw them was at the Phoenix. So. I got to go to that show. Yeah, you, yeah, because you missed the last one. Brian Heatherman and I went from yeah. Music Ontario, and Brian and I used to work with the Headstones at MCA. So we'll get you down there this time. Yeah, I got to see that. It'd be fun. I saw I think one of their first shows in Edmonton with the Morgan Fields. Ah, oh, I, I worked very closely with the Morgan yeah. Fields. Yeah, and it was a sidetrack cafe. Yeah, I remember the sidetrack. And uh, you know, Hugh Dillon is Hugh Dillon. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, by the time they finished their set, last call had happened, and he literally walked straight off and went out the bar to a different bar to see if he could get <laughs> last call over there, <laughs> last call somewhere else. <laughs> he didn't say hi to anybody. He just like walked right out, and then he walked right in about 15 minutes later, mad because nobody would serve him in the city. Wow. <laughs> yeah, the Morgan Fields. That was Alan Piggins, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Who's a great singer-songwriter, and we signed the Morgan Fields to watch music with Ross Monroe, who worked with Triumph at one point. Got oh, my, I got my old school Triumph yeah, shirt yeah, on. Yeah, well, yeah, it's not that yeah, old that school, but Triumph. it's a Swedish rock festival, which is like <laughs> almost nine years ago. Uh, where we also signed the Gundarvas. Oh so, yeah. yeah, last day of spring. Exactly. I remember. First that. day of spring. First day of spring. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, Gundarvas. I th always thought were sort of like uh, Jane's Addiction kind of sounding or. Yeah, a little bit with some XTC in there and yeah. very quirky band. Used to play paint cans for percussion. And yeah, I remember them quite well. Yeah, they were a great band. Then they were from like London. Yeah, Ontario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say Kitchener, but yeah, somewhere out there. I'm an They're Alberta all, guy. It's yeah. all the same. Five one nine. Who knows? <laughs> Kitchener, Waterloo, Guelph, Cambridge. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? That's know. awesome. Yeah, so, I forgot about the Morgan Fields. Hey, they wrote some great songs. Alan's a great songwriter. Yeah. Still, yeah, we, still out there playing. You always have the stories, Ken. <laughs> so, uh, what else do we have to wrap up? Anything? I don't think. Well, applications what? obviously are open. Yes. Uh, yeah. See, we we should be pushing that the yeah, most. Exactly. But, you know, if you don't know about it, Indie Week is in November in Toronto, November seventh to twelfth. Yeah. And if you're an emerging artist, please check out uh, Canada.indieweek.com/apply. Uh, it's a great festival. There's conferencing, panels, demo listening, mentorship sessions, uh, business to business, you name it, industry mixers. Yeah, we're working on some big headliners right now, too, as well, with the, all of our independent bands. So. This is going to be our best year by far. Yeah, it's feeling good. It's already at this point, of the, this time of year, we, we are like more ahead than we've ever been. Mm -hmm. it, everything's fe feeling bigger than ever before. Uh, we're adding more venues, yeah. so there's going to be more bands than we've had in the last few years. Um, like you said, we're working on more headliners. Yeah, so. we're going to do some interesting conference things this year as well. Yeah, and we're shaking to, it up. Yeah, news to come very shortly, but... Uh, yeah, we're shaking it up. Inter interesting ideas this year, so... It's going to be good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, and I'm in meetings, like, pretty much every day this point forth. Um, we, we're... Working on some new international initiatives. We're looking at South America, Japan, uh, a whole bunch of other areas, you know, and, and it's all about opening doors for artists yeah. to, you know, like we're trying to use our leverage of the festival and conference to open doors for artists. For the bands that, yeah, support us and we try to find things for them to do around the world. So. Exactly. And I'm sure you'll open a couple doors next week in New York, so. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I've been in New York for a long time. Uh, Fest Forums, uh, we had a great meeting mm -hmm. at CMW. And 
there's there's a lot of possibilities happening with around that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So no video next week. No. I'll be unless you do one from New York. Do one from Manitoba. <coughs> go, go see Handsome Dick. And in my book, I finished my Tom Jones book. The autobiography was fantastic. So I don't have a new book this week. Oh. Although I did, I did like. <laughs> I okay. just led Daryl out one. Yes. R.D. Lang for you Howard Stern fans. And and can you pass me that book that's... Sitting... This book? Yes. Because uh, I always like plugging oh, this one. Yes. Our friend Jeff. Our friend Jeff. I was hanging out with Jeff on Monday uh, at the Drake. Uh, Radio, Records, and Rockstars. If you haven't picked up this book, uh, it's a great read, great insights on uh, navigating the music industry... From both sides, from, from both the sides. record labels and from the radio side. That's right. And interviewing artists like Alice Cooper or, or Keith Richards, Keith or Richards, Ozzy, David yeah. Bowie, you know. So uh, 